Hi everyone, Sabrina from Campbell's Freedom Farm. And today we're gonna pot a patio tree. Um, this is the olive tree, <clears throat> one of the oldest trees known. Actually, normally this is good for zone seven, it says. I don't believe that. So we're gonna make this as an indoor container pot in the winter. So these are going on sale since it's getting too hot. So this is, I was really curious about this. I used to grow a lot of um, trees that were olive trees and other stuff. And we'll get into that. Now let's talk about the olive tree. These are long lived trees. The average is 300 to 600 years. Although there's a certified olive tree that's 2,000 years old in um, Greece and it's still producing. But um, now these are Mediterranean plants and they don't like a lot of moisture, like hardly anything. So they like more, uh, I guess, deserty, not deserty, but rocky. They could even handle poor soils and stuff. I'm kind of curious about the roots on this before I mix. Now let me tell you about the mixture. I'm only going to do a half of a potting soil because you don't want to hold in any moisture. Some people even put rocks in this to keep the um, moisture away. And I'm just using plain garden soil. And I'm just going to mix it in. And um, really coarse sand would have been great in here. But this is what I've always done before, and it's worked out well. Okay, let's look to see if it does have roots. Oh, it does have some roots. Okay, I was really curious. I've had some trees recently that aren't so good. Um, now, let's talk about the container. We should be using a terracotta pot because it lets moisture out it breathes but i'm only going to put this in probably till christmas and then i'm going to switch to a terracotta because they all go on clearance in october and I, really i want to get a few more and i want to match everything so i want to see how many i get okay with this being said with this mixture I'm just going to put it part way. You're always going to put this, bury it right here on the crown. Don't go anymore. And with an olive tree or even a citrus, you do not want to cover this with anything. So no mulch, no compost, no anything. Let me fill this in real quick. Okay, now that I said we're not going to mulch, we're not going to eat anything, I'm gonna do something that I do every time. <laughs> and remember, I've grown a lot of these. Um, before the house burned down, I had many of these because of one of my boxers. Oh, by the way, this is golden limb thyme. It'll help with bugs. It will not choke out the air to these roots because it also likes it very dry. So it's same, growing conditions but since these are inside I like to use these in my food and teas and they'll be in the same spot so it works out well now I wouldn't do like mint that gets really high or anything else okay let's talk about the medical on this due to its antioxidant compounds that it really helps with cardiovascular disease. And, and I will slaughter this, alleuropian, which reduces cholesterol and inflammation. But what's that got to do with my sweet boxer, Bernice? She was a boxer from the first letter and um, we did a flea product. We never knew you can't do a flea product on a short nosed dog, so she got cancer. So I took her to Columbia 
and um, they gave her two months to live. And um, they said it's in the thyroid, we'll do chemo, and that's all we could do. So don't tell a gardener you have two months and you're not going to try every crazy thing there is. <laughs> because a gardener's going to find a way. So I went to my vet, Dr. Stoltz, and his staff, and they said, we're going to put her on that chemo. And I said, I'm going to try all this crazy stuff like olive leaf. So she got olive leaf and she got spirulina and turmeric and all that. Not only did she beat the cancer, it came back a couple times. She lived to 13. <laughs> so she had three years. And my doctor in Columbia was really mad. We're not going to treat her. Her urine's coming out all these crazy colors. <laughs> and Dr. Stoltz said, she's dying according to you, so we're going to try it. <laughs> and we did. And she lived. Did the olive leaf help? I don't know. She kept living. She also ate the grapes and everything else. But I grew a lot of these, and she would get an olive leaf, well, half of an olive leaf every day until the house burned down. And, um, but it worked out really well. These are super foods and super leaves. It's amazing. So um, let's talk about the growth of this. This is Mediterranean, like I said before, it doesn't like um, rich soil. It doesn't like a lot of water. Let's talk about fertilizers. If you hit this trunk with a fertilizer, it's going to burn it. It just doesn't like it. You have to put it really slow over here. And, um, and I really didn't fertilize mine that much, maybe once a year, and they really got big, considering I was pulling off an awful lot of leaves. Now, what happens with the slow growth and why these live so long is because of the slow growth, the dry conditions, its trunk just is really dense. It's tightly formed. So because of that, the grain is really hard and dry. That helps with pests. They can't get into there. A lot of diseases, although there's a disease going around on these, they could live a long time. Actually cut down, it's um, believed that it'll live forever because it comes back. Now, in Italy, it's illegal to cut an olive tree. You have to move it because they're so valued in that country. You just don't. I guess you get arrested. But why would you want to cut one anyway? I guess for furniture? No, I'd rather have everything else. But um, so we're going to um, grow this. As it gets a little bigger, I'm going to show you how to pop a, propagate it by cuttings. And maybe we'll work on some powder with this. We have to get a couple months in here. But this is Sabrina from Campbell's Freedom Farm. And um, check out to see if your olive trees and citrus are going on clearance right now. Have a great day. Please thumbs up and subscribe. Remember, they count that.